For years, Seattle has told the public all is well. The fish are doing fine on the Skagit River. But the King 5 investigators have found the messages are outdated and propped up by incomplete information. Seattle City Light operates three dams on the Skagit to produce 20% of the city's electricity. King 5 Susanna Frame has been investigating this story for months in her series, Skagit, River of Light and Loss. And she joins us now live in Seattle with the latest on this. Susanna. 100 miles of power lines begin on the Skagit River and run through three counties to deliver electricity to Seattle. And along the way, the public utility has delivered a message to citizens that's as bright and shiny as the city skyline it helps light up. Despite three giant dams in the middle of the river, in news releases, web pages, and signage, City Light assures its customers not to worry about their operation hurting fish and wildlife, such as salmon. The Skagit is the only river that's home to all five species of Puget Sound salmon. And on the web, Seattle City Light says their stewardship means inexpensive hydroelectricity for you and a healthy salmon population for the Skagit. Take chum salmon. City Light calls the species a success on the Skagit, saying salmon are responding to our efforts. Chum are extremely healthy. Since 1985, seeing an eight-fold increase. And in 2002, a return of 210,000 chum was the largest return on record. An eight-fold increase in chum salmon. That sounds good. That sounds incredibly good. We showed Lori Winnemiller, a 30-year City Light customer, a collection of the utility's messages meant for people like her, their ratepayers. What would be your takeaway if you I, just saw that on its face? I would think that it is incredibly successful, as they're saying on the front page, and I would think, wow, somehow this has made things possibly even better than it was before. Seattle City Light is right. 2002 was an epic year for Chum Salmon, but that was nearly 20 years ago, the King 5 investigators have found the city's rave reviews of their impact on Skagit River salmon are outdated and incomplete. After that banner year for chum, according to data from the state, those salmon run severely declined. In 2019, just over 3,000 fish came back. From 2002, that's a 67-fold decrease, not an eight-fold increase the city left on its website. Well, that feels incredibly deceptive to me and um, irresponsible because we need to know what the impact is. We're really not getting the full picture here. Seattle doesn't give the full picture about Chinook salmon either. On the web, they highlight strong returns of Chinook salmon, 25,000 coming back to the Skagit in 2004, held as a landmark event, the largest return in 25 years. Here's what City Light didn't say. Since then, Chinook have steadily decreased on the Skagit. In 2019, 11,800 came back, less than half of the record number posted by the utility. I feel like they are um, painting a rosy picture to allow us to believe that everything is fine. Salmon are in trouble. Ed Eliezer is the regional fish manager for the Washington State Department of Fish and Wildlife. To say that things are all rosy here on the Skagit River sounds like that is not the real story. Not the real story at all. If things were rosy, you'd be hearing, you know, steelhead jumping and people would be fishing. But we're right now, right, right now, today, and this was a stronghold for the Puget Sound. Is Seattle City Light misleading the public with the, the way that you are portraying the situation on your website? You've shared some information with me that causes me to want to go back and take a look and make sure that we are being transparent. Deborah Smith is the general manager and CEO of Seattle City Light, which dubs itself the nation's greenest utility. I can tell you we are not attempting to mislead, but if we don't have the current information or a full picture, we could in fact be having that impact without intending to. Federal agencies have long determined that dams hurt fish by blocking off river habitat they need for spawning and maturing. But Seattle City Light says that's not the case on the Skagit because, according to them, fish can't swim past large boulders and steep grades below their dams anyway. Website messages and signs greeting the public ask, what about the fish? The answer? No problem. Rapids below their dams serve as an effective natural fish barrier. 
State and federal regulators say that's not the correct message. In public documents, No Fisheries writes they've concluded no insurmountable barrier exists that would stop fish from getting through the dam area. And scientists from the National Park Service write they haven't found any evidence of a fish passage barrier below Seattle's dams. We're ratepayers, so we're stockholders, we're shareholders, and they need to do what's right by the citizens. Now, if you were to look on the website right now, you would notice that those pages are no longer there. Seattle City Light did a re relaunch of their entire website at the end of January. So they say this was just a coincidence that that happened at the same time I was working on this story. Now, these dams are extremely important for the city right now because they're trying to get them relicensed through the federal government for up to 50 years. And the state and federal regulators and the tribes involved in this process have been extremely critical of City Light, saying they haven't agreed to do enough under the conditions of the new license to help salmon recover on the Skagit. And what I just covered, that sort of thing, is part of the problem, they say. If you continue to tell yourself this narrative that everything's okay, that our dams aren't hurting fish, they say that doesn't lead to appropriate decision making for the future, almost 50 years. So these stakeholders would like to see the city be more realistic about what their dams could be doing to the health of the river and to salmon. I'm Susanna Frame reporting live in Seattle. Susanna, thank you. I know it's a story we'll keep following really closely. Thanks.